Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with a post ER COVID update. Haven't done one of these in a while. I'm here, unfortunately, the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. And so I'll probably do another one, you know, later in the, in the week. For those of you new to the pod or to the broadcast, I guess, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine and functional medicine doctor outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Been doing COVID updates um, and wellness stuff uh, since the the uh, virus first came on scene seven or eight months ago. Uh, I usually do updates uh, regarding what's going on in the world of COVID, but also when I work in the hospital, I try to give an update to give people a sense of what's happening here. And um, I actually haven't worked in a couple of weeks, so it's the first time I've been back. And our census uh, is, is kind of crazy. We're seeing a lot of capacity strain on the hospital system, not only our hospital, but other hospitals as well. Earlier in the week, I think that we were boarding 38 patients in the emergency department, meaning that the people were either were admitted, but had no place to go. And we're seeing that throughout the region, meaning that hospitals are full and people are backing up into the emergency department. Now, my emergency department, I think has 48 or 50 beds. If 38 of those are filled up with people who are admitted um, but don't have a bed, then that significantly shortens the or cuts the number of beds I have to treat patients with, which then leads to very long wait times, unhappy patients. And also our fear in emergency medicine is the person who's in the waiting room who's actually really, really sick that we miss because they have to wait for a long time. And, and that's a danger for, for, for us. And we, we worry about that. So this is a time of year when we really aren't expecting this to happen. It's kind of a, a relatively slow time of year, whereas in a month from now is when flu season hits and we ex expect this. So if we combine COVID with flu and rising numbers of COVID like we're seeing, it's it's really concerning for us looking forward. I want to talk a little bit about numbers. Um, worldwide, 36.9 million cases of COVID, over a million deaths. On Friday, there were 350,000 new COVID cases worldwide. That's a new record. Uh, in the U.S., 7.76 million cases, uh, 217,000 deaths, uh, over 1,100 people died yesterday of COVID. In my state, 227,000 cases, 3,768 uh, deaths. Um, a lot of you have very kindly uh, inquired about my daughter who uh, was diagnosed with COVID up at Appalachian State. Her whole entire house, four girls, have all been quarantined with COVID this week. Luckily, they're all doing very, very well. They have mild symptoms, mostly allergy and cold symptoms. One girl lost her taste of, of smell and, and taste. Um, but other than that, they're all recovering. And I believe their quarantine time ends this at the end of this weekend, I think. Um, most of their symptoms have completely resolved at this time. So thank you for your concern. Again, college students uh, was not surprising to me at all that they uh, got it, but they've all come through it luckily safely. A couple of interesting things I think we should talk about. And, you know, one of the things we focus on at our clinic is optimizing lifestyles and, and health. And one of those things we certainly look at is weight and we do a lot of weight management and, and weight loss in our clinic. And we are starting to learn and we've, we've kind of known that obesity is a big risk factor for COVID and the, the, the bad effects of COVID. University of North Carolina here up, up the street in, in Chapel Hill um, did a study that showed that um, for people who are obese, which means a BMI of greater than 30, and you know, don't get me started on BMI, it's a terrible measure of body composition. Body fat percentage is far, far better. BMI is just a calculation based on your height and weight. So just as a quick aside, if we had Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, and I don't know how tall he is, but let's say he's six feet tall and he weighed you know, 280 pounds at his prime. And you have another guy who's also six feet tall, 280 pounds, but he's a kind of a round fat guy. Their BMIs are identical because BMI is a calculation based on your height and your weight. So it does not take into account how muscular you are. Whereas in that, in that scenario, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was probably 12% body fat and the obese guy might be 35% body fat. So but anyway, we're going to use BMI because it's, it's a common convention. Um, and if your BMI is above 30, that's considered obese. Um, you have an increased risk of being in the ICU, increased risk of being hospitalized, and a 50% increase in your risk of dying from COVID. So that's significant. 
Well, also, um, the CDC just came out with another risk group. Now they're saying if you're overweight, and that's a BMI of 25 to 30, uh, if you're overweight, you're at increased risk as well. And there's some good data to support that. Not as, not as high risk as being obese or, you know, what we call super morbidly obese with a BMI above 40. But, you know, in the U.S., in, in adults over 20, 71% of the population fits the criteria for being overweight, meaning they have a BMI above 25. And so that's a significant number, and it may be in part why the U.S. is such a high death rate for COVID compared to other places in the world. So what we have noticed a lot in our clinic is a lot of people, you know, had that initial COVID-19, you know, the COVID-19 pounds that a lot of people picked up. Well, a lot of our patients, you know, kind of pulled themselves out of their, their nosedive and decided to get healthy. And we're actually starting to see a lot of our patients at the clinic actually really doing actually better than they were before COVID um, because they've really taken nutrition and fitness and sleep and stress and hormones that we're really concerned about uh, it, to heart and have really kind of changed their lifestyles around and people are doing better. Um, I am here the whole weekend. I'll probably post again on um, probably Monday morning. If anything really exciting comes out either in the news, maybe I'll, I'll post tomorrow. Um, I'll keep you updated. Uh, we were very, very busy last night. I'm still seeing a lot of COVID, but a lot of other things. And, and for some reason, it was rainy here in North Carolina. I saw four rollover car accidents. I don't know what, what it was, but that seemed to be the 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 uh, the, the uh, flavor of the night in the emergency department was rollover car wrecks. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear your masks. Take care of yourselves. Look after your family. And be a good person. Look out for other people. You know, our actions affect others, especially when it comes to infectious disease. So, you know, it takes not a lot to, to do good by others and protect everybody else. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great morning.